Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. In this video, I'm just going to give you some quick tips on how you can get dates and use them and turn them into quarters, months, days of the week, etc., uh, to help your plans, your metric sheets, and however you might want to use them. So this is something I use quite a lot. Uh, so I thought, and it was a request I had via one of my YouTube videos, that could I share something like this? So here you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this sheet so people can go in and use the formulas if they so want to. So let's have a look. In this column, I've got a series of random dates and different years. And across the top here are the formulas. And what I've done is I've put an apostrophe in front of each formula so you can actually see what is written there um, on that basis. So what the first one is, is it's looking at the date and all it's doing is it's saying, what is the year of that formula? So if I look at that one, year date at row, it's just going to look at in that row, what is the year? So if I drag this down, you can see it's copying it and it's going, these ones 2023, this one 2021, 24. So again, it's a quick way of being able to understand the years in there. And if I go to the next one, what's the month? So it's looking at the month number. And so here, month date at row, if I now drag that down again, it's just going to look at the dates and work it out. Now, if you want just the months in month order, what you can do is you can type them in. Now, in a regular column, you can't actually just drag and auto populate the dates down. So what you need to do is have a formula which is equals the cell above plus one, just takes two ticks to do. And then you can, that you drag down and then you can have your 12 months or how about they go 13 months. Let's get rid of the bottom one. Um, and on that basis, if you're using this formula, which I've just changed ever so slightly for here, so it's just looking here rather than the date, and it's saying if it's not month number one, it's January, if it's two, it's February, etc. etc. So this way, then you can have this. And if I want to now start replicating it multiple times for multiple years, I can just do that again and you can keep going, etc. on that list. So there you go, you can have time and time again um, for different purposes. So let me just get rid of that. So there we have that one. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to leave that formula so you can see that one on the published sheet as well. So let me just wrap the text there. OK, so scrolling back up. So if I just drag this date down, sorry, which I haven't done yet. So here is looking at the um, so on this one is saying what's the month of this cell. So if I drag this formula down, it's the same as the one down below but it's looking at the date field and it's just saying if it is, if this one is month two, in this case it's February, in this one it is January, and here it is five, so it's saying May. And it's basically looking at the numbers and saying, based on the number of the month, what a, then you hard code it. And what you can do is you can change that to be whatever language you want it to be. So if you don't want it to be January, if you want it to be in Spanish, let's go Enero, um, Febrero, for example, Febrero, uh, Marzo, for example, then you can do all that as well. So you can see immediately, well, I, because I didn't do that formula down, let me just copy this, get rid of that. And you see that says Enero. So I'm just going to drag this down and you can see Enero, Febrero. Um, do we have a March in there? We don't. So let me just change this date to be March. And then you'll see Marzo come through as well. Febrero, Marzo. So there you have it. It could be whatever language you want it to be. So let me just get rid of these and come back in to January, February, March. Great. Okay, and we're just going to save the sheet. Okay, quarters. So how do the quarters work? So the way I do this is I start with a larger number and then work backwards from there, which is that better way of doing the logic. So if the number is greater than nine, it means it's month 10, October, 11, November, or 12, December. So if it's greater than nine, it's quarter four. If it's greater than six, therefore, so the numbers 10, 11, 12 will have already been considered. So then it goes to the next lot in the sequence, which is seven, eight, nine, it's quarter three. Or it's four, five, six, quarter two. If not, if it's greater than zero, then it's quarter one. Otherwise, it's blank. So on that basis, what you're doing is it's saying, look at the month in this here, and if that month number is greater than nine, it's quarter four, etc. So let's drag this down. And then you have all the quarters quickly and easily listed for you. Week numbers. There's a formula for that. We equals week number. 
and then you're looking at the date here. So again, you can quickly and easily, for whatever reasons you'll be doing it, probably financial, um, you're going through and you're saying, well, what is the week number for planning purposes? And you can see exactly which week number that falls there. Other ones, weekdays. So you can see what number of the weekday it is. So if I click on, on weekday, it's gonna look, and in here, it's gonna say weekday, date at row, and it's gonna bring back a number. So that's five, and if I just drag this down, so let's just have a look here. So seven is seven Sunday. So actually the watch out here is, in Smartsheet terms, the week starts on a Sunday. So Sunday is number one and Saturday is number seven. So just a quick watch out for that one. So as you go down um, seven, so if you want to then be using these week numbers, you can again do the same thing here and you can, you can put the actual wording that you want to appear after it. Lunes, martes, miércoles, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that formula will tell you what day of the week it is here. So if I just start dragging that down and you can see what it's doing is it's referencing across there. So this is saying this one is Wednesday. Let's hover over here and you can see, yes, Wednesday, the 26th of July. So those are kind of the main ones which you might want to use, or again, you might have other ones, but these ones which I thought would be useful to people. And then quite often what I do is for visual purposes, I then bring these together to say what's the month and the year. So how do I do that? I use the join formula. So I take one formula and then I put a plus sign and then put whatever I want to separate it, the separator, and then I put the plus sign again. So let me just do that for you if it's not something you're familiar with. So I'm gonna say, in this case, I want to know what month it is. So I'm gonna say January, and then I'm gonna put the plus sign in, put an apostrophe, um, and I'm gonna put a hyphen to separate them. And then I'm gonna put the plus sign again. I'm gonna say what year, 2022, and there we have Jan 2022, and I bring that down. So there's a selection of options for you, um, and hopefully that is useful in terms of how you can see this bit. Again, just from a date perspective, one last bit I was going to say is if you now want to say, well, actually, much so to the numbers here, I want the dates of the calendar year, all you need to do is you need to put the first date in and then follow that on. So just say plus one of the item above, and then you can have this list going down for as long as you so choose to, and it's going in sequence on there. And you know, on, on that basis, if you want to then be saying, well, what is the day of the week, etc., on all that piece, you could be absolutely doing that bit. So let's just drag it down. And um, so the first weekday of this year was a Sunday, and we're going to scroll down, and you're going to see it's just going to keep Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc., on there. One last thing which someone asked me about was about conditional formatting. So how do I see what, what days are the weekends, etc.? So let me just drag this one down a bit further um, for maximum effect on this piece. So we've got the dates down here. So what I'm just going to show you here is I've got a conditional formatting. And if I turn that on, if the weekday is a Saturday or Sunday, then make that look those lines gray. So if I now switch that on, um, on that bit, it is enabled. You can see from my calendar, then the weekdays are in white rows and then the weekends are the gray ones. So the Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday um, on this side. So a variety of options, play around with dates, play around with formulas, and I'm gonna save that sheet and it is published. So I will put this link and you can see exactly the live bit here. There's a link to this sheet, which I will put in the, um, I'll link it on the video. And so you can have it. So trust that has been useful for those looking for those pieces. And again, you can save those formulas. So you've got them readily saved for when you might need them. So thanks for watching and more videos to follow. Bye for now.